today on Las Vegas Now. It's an interview you'll only see here on Las Vegas Now, our exclusive with the legendary John Fogarty. He talks everything from Credence Clearwater Revival to Woodstock and his New Vegas show run. Plus... It's a lot of scary people here. <laughs> Get ready to laugh because comedian Joe Coy is joining us to talk family, gossip, and his latest show on Netflix. Also, are you challenged when it comes to organization? California Closets is here to tell you the three things that you can do to clean up the gear clutter. You are watching Las Vegas Now with Lindsay Simon, Kendall Tenney, and Mercedes Martinez. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Las Vegas Now. I'm Lindsay Simon. And I'm Mercedes Martinez. Welcome. Happy Thursday to you. It's almost Friday. Kendall has the day off today. Yes, he does. So it's a lady party. I know. I'm not complaining. I love me some Kendall, but given the two of us together, you never know what's going to happen. <laughs> well, one of the biggest stories of today, you know, he's one of the greatest rock and roll singers in history and led the influential American rock band Credence Clearwater Revival. Now, John Fogarty is back in Las Vegas performing over at the Wynn. This new run of shows comes after two successful sold out residencies back in 2016. Now I had the pleasure of sitting down with Fogarty earlier today for an exclusive interview you will only see here on Las Vegas Now and we talked about everything from his New Vegas mini residency to the good old Woodstock days. Oh I can't wait to hear this. Yeah Credence Clearwater uh, he was supposed to open they were opening for uh, the Grateful Dead. Oh, okay. And they were supposed to play right before them, but the Grateful Dead didn't come out on time. So here's what happened. Anyway, the Grateful Dead went on about midnight. Uh, sort of a, um, let's say, a lackadaisical work ethic, if you can call it that. And so, um, true to form, uh, they went on stage, they played about 45 minutes, and then we thought they were done. Then an hour went by, you know, and we're, hey, well, can we go on? No, they're still on stage, you know, just a lot of confusion. And we found out in the 90s, not at the time, that the entire Grateful Dead had all taken LSD. This story gets even crazier. Wait till you hear what happened when Credence Clearwater was finally able to take the stage. That's coming up later on Las Vegas Now. Oh, wow. Like, was can it you intimidating? imagine? Well, we show up and he's doing his sound check. So he's singing just like Bad Moon Rising, just <sighs> shredding the guitar and I'm sitting in the front row and it's done, you know, they finish the show and no one else <laughs> is like, oh, it's just me. <laughs> it was so amazing. He's seriously such an interesting man. So I can't wait to show you more of this interview. Oh. We've got more coming up in the show and then uh, tomorrow and then next week too, we'll get the big, you know, the big juicy guts of the interview. So Can't wait to hear it. Another great show that I know you were at, Backstreet Boys opening <laughs> night was larger than life. Formed in front of a sold out crowd last night at Planet Hollywood. If you missed them, you still have time to see them through March 18th. They just added some April dates, plus they're going to be back in June. So how was it? I want all the details. It was amazing. Was it really It good? was amazing. Uh, my friend whose birthday it was yesterday. Happy birthday, Caitlin. <laughs> uh, we went to the show and blown away. Their dance moves and choreography was just like back in the 90s. Did they do the... Oh, they did all of okay, it. Okay, good. They did a chair. I don't want to give too much away. Okay. But you will not be... Like, oh, you I, will not be upset. I think I'm going next week. I was thinking about you all night. I was like, I wonder what song they're singing right now. Like, it was a blast. Exciting. Oh, Very it was cool. so much fun. Well, another Las Vegas headliner showing off her moves. Jennifer Lopez joined Jimmy Fallon for a dance off. Lopez showed she still has the moves as she pulled out the washing machine on spin. Wow. She can get it. Oh, that's so good. She also did Seeing Yourself on Jumbo Tron. <laughs> oh, so true. You know who does a good Seeing Yourself on Jumbo Tron is one of our, our good friends on the show, Marcel. I don't know if oh, yeah. uh, you've ever... No. Marcel, would you, you, you like to the show? Yeah. Here we go. Oh, and he doesn't like being on camera. <laughs> he hates it. But, okay. All right, this it. is Marcel. Do we... <laughs> <laughs> You're on the Jumbo Tron. 
than J Lo. That's it. That's all we're gonna get from Marcel. <laughs> See you tomorrow, guys. <laughs> well, before she was an actress and singer, she was a fly girl in the '90s show in Living Color. So you know she's got the moves. Plus her her uh, access theater, her Planet Hollywood residency. Is That's another amazing. good one. Yeah, love that one. Yeah. yeah. Well, the original cast of The Big Bang Theory have reportedly taken a pay cut to help out two other cast members get raises while negotiating new contracts. Jim Parsons, Johnny Galecki, Kaylee Cuoco, Simon Helberg, and Kunal Nayar are giving up some of their salary so that their co-stars, Melissa Rauch and Maya Bialik, can make more money. This is so cool. Now, according to Variety, the original five stars, they earn about a million dollars per episode. But now they're going to make $100,000 less. And that $500,000 is going to be split between Roush and Bialik. Now, the cast of Friends did something similar back in the 90s when the cast held out in negotiation as a group until they each got a million dollars right. per episode. So that's pretty cool. Would you do that? Um, yeah, I would. I, if, if someone, like, I felt like they deserved it, I would do that. And I mean, let's be honest. They were already making $200,000 an episode, which is not... I mean, think about that for yeah. one episode. So now they're going to make a little more, which is great, more on par with their co-stars. But yeah, would you do that? I would. I Thank would. Thank you. Yeah. She's going like... to do that. Did you hear that, Boston? <laughs> She's going to give me some. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, we can make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> we want to hear from you. Let us know on our Facebook page, what do you think of this gesture? Could you see yourself doing the same thing for your work friends? We're going to reveal your answers later on in the show. Or right now, because it's so <laughs> exciting. Derek wrote, wow, bravo. Amazing how giving and sweet this cast is. It's amazing. We'll be sure to never miss an episode, CBS. Okay, Don Martinez, he said, why can't we have politicians who are ethical? <laughs> That's a good uh, question. Good point. <laughs> good point, Don. Well, thank you guys for, uh, for answering those questions. And we're going to continue to put up questions on our Facebook, on our Twitter. So we love hearing from you guys. And you might even make it to the show. Yeah. Uh, we love your little cameos on there. Yeah. So get those. Uh, be, make sure you friend us on Facebook. Yeah. Well, guys, let's check in with Paul to get some of today's news headlines. Hey, Paul. Ladies, thanks. This was news that all the networks broke in with uh, into programming today. Attorney General Jeff Sessions recusing himself from a federal investigation into Russian interference in the election. He says he's doing so at the urging of senior officials in the Justice Department. Sessions made the decision after it emerged that he had failed during his Senate confirmation hearing to disclose two pre-election meetings with Moscow's ambassador to Washington at a time when uh, Russia was accused of interfering in the presidential race. Sessions though standing behind his claim that he had no interaction with Russians during last year's election. Well, Las Vegas is now one step close to becoming the eSports capital of the world. Tomorrow, Millennial eSports will open the doors to their brand new state-of-the-art gaming arena. It's a 15,000 square foot facility located at the Neonopolis building on Fremont. They're kicking off things by hosting the uh, Halo World Championship qualifier this weekend. And the Red Cross is assisting two people who were displaced after an attempt to get rid of bees sparked a house fire. Around noon uh, at a home near Washington and Jones, fire crews say the residents were trying to use fire to get rid of bees that had taken refuge in an exhaust pipe. We're still looking at eSports there. Well, this, uh, this bee extraction didn't work out too well. The home ended up catching fire. And firefighters want to remind you that if you have a bee problem, you should probably hire a professional. Ladies, I learned that the hard way a few years ago. I was living in Phoenix, tried to get rid of some bees that had formed a little hive under our uh, lemon tree. I said, wife. I got this. Bees were our friend. I'll treat them as such. Well, they weren't very friendly. It ended up with me having to jump in the pool and stay underwater for as long as I could. Oh, no. Did they hover over the pool? For a little bit. Not the whole, <laughs> not the whole swarm, but a few of them did. A few of them were smart. Oh, oh no. Wow. You have to tell me twice to hire a professional. <laughs> thanks, well, Paul. Thanks, Paul. And now let's kick it over to Ted Florendo, who, who has our Blue Dog RV Weekend weather report. Thank you very much, ladies. I would have paid to see that with Paul with the bees there, right? Current conditions outside in the mid to high 60s, an absolutely beautiful day. Why? Look how much we warmed up now near average. A little bit of breeze for Las Vegas, Henderson, North Las Vegas, not so much. Down to light winds less than 10 miles per hour. We think tonight should be rather tranquil for your wind speeds. Your weekend looks good though, at least 
for one of the days. Saturday specifically, 72 degrees. Saturday with partly sunny skies. We'll see breezes kick in later in the day, maybe a little gusty at times. But Sunday, however, is the day where it does get very windy. 67 degrees, we cool things off. We could see gusts between 45 to 50 miles per hour. Wind advisories are most likely will be issued for that specific day on Sunday. So that's the day where you don't do the picnic weather. You bring that inside, ladies. That's also probably the day that I'll be inviting myself over to your house for dinner. Just so you let you you guys know. I'm making Fruit Loops for dinner. <laughs> so <laughs> I am easy to please. Fruit Loops, I'm down with that. <laughs> the way I put the milk, the milk to cereal ratio is really, <laughs> you know, it's good. Thanks, Ted. He may be Vegas royalty, but Graceland was his true home. Coming up, we take a look at the home of the king's $45 million expansion. Whoa. Plus, how one airline is looking to trick your senses to help you enjoy your adult beverage 30,000 feet in the air. Hmm, we'll explain coming up. But first, here is today's trivia. In 1933, what monster movie had its world premiere in New York? We'll have the answer when we come back. Your exclusive Weather Now forecast every day with Sherry, Ted, and Katie on 8 News Now. Friday on Good Day, a new product. Source. Today on 8 News Now at 5, the Justice Department making a move and putting the future of Nevada's marijuana industry on shaky ground. George Knapp shows you what's now on the table. Plus road rage and Nevada drivers, new concerns for our streets on 8 News Now at 5. Before the break, we asked, in 1933, what monster movie had its world premiere in New York? The answer? The original King Kong. It starred Fay Ray, Bruce Cabot, and Robert Armstrong. I did not know that one. I didn't either. I saw the one with Jack Black many, many, many oh. years oh, later. Oh, I didn't even see that. Yeah. I get those confused with Mighty Joe Young. Oh. <laughs> Charlize Theron. I, yes. I think I saw that. <laughs> That's a good one. Well, let's go around the world in 60 seconds with these Entertainment Now headlines. Okay. Are you in the market for a new home? Maybe one steeped in a bit of entertainment history with plenty of room to roam while well, you are in luck because Michael Jackson's Neverland Ranch is back on the market and the price is being slashed. Well, that's all relative, but it's by <laughs> $33 million. It finally, it first went on the market a couple years ago for a cool $100 million. Now it's available for only $67 million. Oh. The train station, that big floral Disney-esque Neverland clock, that all remains. But now the property is being marketed as the Sycamore Valley Ranch, so oh. they're not really calling it Neverland anymore. Uh, and you know our budget's 65 million, oh, so 67 is just a little too much. Maybe for, you can yeah. negotiate. Maybe. You know, who knows? <laughs> well, Graceland has a new 45 million dollar addition. The 200,000 square foot facility now offers a fully immersive Elvis and pop culture experience to celebrate the reign of the king. The expansion will feature state of the art attractions and an entirely new visitor experience. It's built behind the current visitor center on the former site of the Craft Manor Apartments, wow. if you know that location. Well, this isn't the first renovation. A $92 million guest house was added back in October. That's Dang. pretty impressive. So much to see there. Oh, yeah. Also, an airline out of Hong Kong, they're looking to trick your taste buds into thinking you've had some really good beer. Cathay Pacific, they introduced a beer brew specifically designed to taste better while the passengers miles above ground. It contains honey and dragon eye, which is a, a fruit that tastes like, what's it? Lychee? Lychee? I don't get, lychee. Lychee, okay. I'm sorry. They're like, this beer tastes like total doo-doo oh. on earth, but wait until you get, until that seatbelt sign comes out and then try to taste it, you're gonna love it. Why not just order a good tasting beer? Or wine. Know. Marketing. It's all marketing. <laughs> I know. It's all marketing. Know. <laughs> and do we make it in 60 seconds? Not even close. It's us. <laughs> of course not. It's going to be like 180 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're not that funny right now. We're a little funny. We're. Not, I think you're funny. I think you're funny. But, <laughs> but this guy definitely hilarious. is. Yeah. <laughs> there Joe he is. Joe Coy coming <laughs> up. He'll be joining us in three minutes. <laughs> Also, we talked to the fortunate son. Wait until you find out what John Fogarty's most memorable moment from Woodstock is. It's coming up on Las Vegas Now.
Advanced Biomedical Research in Henderson. Hey everyone, he's a funny guy who likes to make fun of his mom in some of his skits, but we love him anyways. In all of my skits. In all of my skits. <laughs> you have the best Because if, if I don't make fun of her, then she says something. And if I make fun of her too much, then she says something. It's like you a, can't it's, win. Yeah, it's a lose-lose with her. Joe Coy, everyone. Mm -hmm. So hey, good to yeah. have you here. You're like the man of stage and screen and restaurants and everything. What? How do you do all of this? Okay, you've got, uh, and we want to get to each of these individually, but the show at the yeah. TI, Netflix, restaurant, yeah. just being hilarious in general. Thank you. How do you do it all? <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I can be corny and say if you dream it, it'll happen. You know, like I didn't get that Netflix special. It was never offered, and I, I didn't get it from Comedy Central. Um, so I went and produced it myself. You made oh, it yourself? Wow. Yeah, I paid for everything. It all out of the pocket. It was 100 percent risk, and uh, and I put it all on the table and. And we resubmitted it back to Netflix after I cut it up, and and they bought it right right there. So wow, yeah, it, it was kind of sad when they didn't offer it at first, and then uh, and then me and my manager just looked at each other, and was like, hey, we, let's just do it ourselves, and if we have to sell it out of the out of our car, then we'll do it. But it, that was always my motivation, anyways. Like I, I never got into catch rising star up at the MGM, so I went and rented a theater. I rented the Hunt Ridge Theater. And I used to sell that out. And then when I sold that out, then Catch a Rising Star was like, oh, can you come over here and do that? And You're so like, it's my like, price just went up. Yeah, it's just <laughs> do it yourself, you yeah. know? If, you, if no one's looking at you, then you gotta prove to people what, what you can do and what you're capable of doing. That's kind of corny, but. No, but it's the truth. So. Yeah, it is the truth. And we know you get inspiration from your mother. Well, yeah, it's well, kind of it's kind of like uh, indirect for my mom. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like inspired by my mom indirectly, but yeah, she's the one that put me on stage first. And But then when I wanted to pursue comedy, she was like, but you're not that funny, Joseph. <laughs> That's not a real job. I was joking this whole time. Now you need a job, Joseph. Does she ever get her feelings hurt, though? No, she loves it. She like I it. said, okay. if I don't okay. talk about I her enough, sure. at the end of the show, she goes, you know, you only talk about me for 15 minutes. <laughs> and you're on stage for over an hour. <laughs> Please explain that, Joseph. <laughs> Does she ever I took TV? notes. She will have notes. <laughs> there was so much stupid stuff you did when you were a kid, Josette. I've got all of it listed here. Does she yeah. ever give you advice on other things that you need to, to work into your act? Uh, yeah, she, she always gives like a story from like, you know, oh, you remember when you sang at my wedding and you couldn't sing? That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I want to it's always hear embarrassing this. moments for me. But <laughs> I'm like, Mom, I think I want to make more fun of you. She's, yeah, yeah she's, she's funny, man. She wrote a joke one time and posted it on my door. And when I woke up, it was written on my door. And it was the worst written joke ever. Oh, you have to tell but I tell it on stage and people die laughing. What is it? It she goes uh, a guy called she she used to work at uh, at the Caesars mm -hmm. at, at, like a hotel management or whatever and there was a complaint. The guy had an accent and he was complaining to her but she had an accident uh, an accent and when they were talking they couldn't understand each other <laughs> and he kept saying what and then she was like what? And she goes it was so funny Joseph. We couldn't understand each other with our accents. <laughs> He was like, what? I was like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, is she here with you right now? Did we no. Get to meet her? Oh. No, she's here. She lives here. Oh, she lives here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that why you come back so often? Nah, yeah, I come plug, plug, plus the restaurant. My restaurant's here, so I like to visit that a lot. Can I plug that? Yeah, plug? talk yeah. about it. 9440 West Sahara. Yo, Jay. Mercedes At Village, there, Village Square. It's, yeah, in the Village Square, uh, like by the theater. Yeah. It's really good food. I always <laughs> look for you when I, I'm in there. I'm like, you're still here. Merce but I really I told you it's on me. Oh, no way. I keep telling her every time she goes, just drop your name and you're covered. I got yeah. you. Like, do you do that? And because then she goes I would and never pays. Do, that. Would you, do you, are you a name dropper? No, I don't do you, name drop do at all. Do you go anywhere and say, I'm Joe Coy. I would like that for free. No, See, because usually when I, I walk in, that? they go, Mr. Coy. <laughs> I don't know why like John Lovitz. Mystic Hall. <laughs> Welcome to our establishment. This is all for free. This is amazing. <laughs> well, when you come to town, you're busy a lot. But do you do anything else? Do you like to go to shows? I mean, I thought I saw you at Backstreet Boys last night. What I would love to you? go to Backstreet Boys. It was good. That, you... Those guys are amazing. Those guys are still amazing. Those guys can sing. Those are good. One thing I liked about Backstreet Boys is they, they were singing and dancing at the same time. They didn't, uh, what's it called? Uh, lip, lip sync. Lip sync, yeah. Yeah, they were like on point with that. And I, and I always appreciated that about those guys. So yeah, go see that show, you guys. That's pretty cool they have a residency here. Well, but I think the show that people need to go see is your show. Yes! Over at the TI Theater. Treasure that... Island, March 3rd, 9 p.m. show. It's almost done. It's almost gone. 
Oh look at that cool picture of me. Oh, look at you. you You're kind of like, so hey, what's fly. up? Yeah, real fly, huh? <laughs> March 28th, Netflix, you guys. I can't, w okay, so from Seattle. That was my next question. Yeah, it was Seattle. Joe Coy Why live Seattle? from Seattle. That's, Seattle. that's actually where I grew up. Okay. I started comedy in Vegas, though. Oh. Yeah, but I grew up in, in, in Seattle. Where'd you start in Vegas? I, the Hunt Ridge Theater. I used to rent, the, I, there was a cafe called Buzzy's Cafe across the street from uh, uh, UNLV, and I used to do that every Wednesday night. Oh my god! And I would perform for like six people. Follow your dreams. Full yes, circle. that's what you need to do. Exactly. Well, thank you. You're going to stick around, too, because yeah. I think we're talking some celebrity news with you. Coming. What? Let's yeah. do it. I love it. Well, Woodstock was definitely a pivotal moment in music history, but wait till you hear what it was like from a musician's point of view. Yep, John Fogarty up next in an interview you'll only see here on Las Vegas Now. The legendary musician spills on what really happened behind the scenes at Woodstock. Jeopardy! Weeknights at 7, only on 8 News, News Now. is the legendary John Fogarty doing his sound check at the win earlier today. I was able to be there. It sounded absolutely amazing. And Fogarty has been in the music industry for five decades. He hasn't missed a beat. We were talking about when Credence Clearwater Revival performed at Woodstock. Now they played right before the Grateful Dead, but didn't end up going on stage until around 2.30 in the morning. Here's what happened next. I started to rock out, um, really wanted my band to do well in front of all these people, um, and the people were asleep. I mean, it, they'd had a couple of days of rain and, and uh, let's say, challenging conditions and maybe not a lot of food and water, and a lot of people were down there in various stages of undress and sleeping. They were, they were all intertwined and asleep, and so I felt I was frustrated. Um, that was my experience. So I actually, after I like, playing some really, I thought, rock and music, and you know, I went up to the mic and I tried to explain, you know, in the best that I could. Well, come on, we want to, you know, we want, we want you to like us. We're trying hard and all that. And some guy way out there, uh, I heard he was, you know, he had a lighter or something, and I saw the light and I heard him say, "Don't worry about it, Joe." We're with ya! <laughs> <laughs> Five decades later, he said he still remembers that moment. And he was like, I performed for that guy that night. <laughs> now, by the way, one of the amplifiers used in Fogarty's Vegas show was actually from that Woodstock concert. There's also a very interesting story about his guitar. We'll have more on that tomorrow here on Las Vegas Now. John Fogarty, Fortunate Son in Concert, kicks off tomorrow and runs through March 11th. He'll also be back in May. Over to you, Mercedes. Brad and Angelina now talking to each other again. Could it be a reunion? What event led to the divorcees on speaking terms? And it's not about the game, it's about the food. What's cooking over at the USA Sevens Rugby Tournament? We're gonna get a sneak peek. Whether you're looking to add climbing into the weekend until gusty winds knock them right back down again. Friday on Good Day. You are watching Las Vegas Now with Lindsay Simon, Kendall Tenney, and Mercedes Martinez. Everyone, welcome back. Well, it grows bigger and better each year. The USA Sevens International Rugby Tournament is returning to Sam Boyd this weekend. Fans will see 16 international rugby teams play 77 matches during a three-day competition. Players from all across the globe, including Argentina, Canada, New Zealand, and England, more than 75,000 fans will be in attendance, and that means there will be some hungry mouths to feed. And one of the people helping to feed the crowds is Graham Perkett from Perkies with some South African specialties. Graham, this, smell, this smells amazing. So thank you for coming in. It's a pleasure. And I want to hear about this dish you have. Maybe we can get a shot. You've well, already started. We started, we have a chicken curry, yeah? And it's a total unique dish. What we do, it's called a bunny chow. And it came out of South Africa. It's a bread that's hollowed out. Okay. You take that out, and it's filled with chicken curry in it. 
It's called a bunny chow? It's called a bunny chow. It was invented by the Indians in South Africa that came out of India, the Nebanyas, and they actually invented a vegetable curry. But uh, most people love meat, so right. they were vegetarians. So we started making chicken and lamb curry, and that's how it came to. And this is the dish that we were serving at the Rugby Sevens. Okay. And there's a few other dishes here. Yes, let's take a look uh, at these. Burevors is a South African sausage. It's a beef and pork combination. It's, it's very different from other sausages because it's coarsely ground and the spices and flavors coming from South Africa. Out here we have something of the English tradition, sausage rolls okay. and Cornish pasties. Uh, these are meat pies. And out here we have some desserts, such as milk tart and cook sisters. What kind of tart? Milk tart. It's a cake base with a custard-like filling with cinnamon on top. And what are these sisters? Do you call them sisters? <laughs> They're called cook sisters. It's, cook a sisters. it's a type of a donut. Okay. Uh, it, it is fried and dropped into an ice cold syrup, and the syrup is sucked into the syrup, into the cook sister. Oh, wow. So the whole thing is syruped right through. And out here we have some of South Africa's jerky. They've been doing it for over 350 years. All naturally done, no de dehydrators. Wow. So it's a dried uh, meat and dried sausage that we have out there. And what can, these all look delicious. What can people expect from the festival? From the festival, they're going to have so many different people that are out there with different vendors, with different foods. And it's, it's just something that is international food. So it's coming from all over, from Samoa and Tonga and South Africa, England, French. So you're getting a taste Everywhere. of the world at this event. And I'd advise people really to come out and check it out because you're not going to see this again. And do people have to have tickets to the Sevens to get into the fan festival? Tickets, Is that how it works? Tickets, yes. They can be purchased on UNLV. Okay. Uh, Tickets.com. And okay. that's where you can get the tickets from. All right. I love it. Well, thank you so much. And we are going to kick it over to Celebrity News. So thank you. Oh, wait. Hey, do you have to take this or can I? Can I? You can stop. I can share? Up. I can yes. share? All right. Oh, thank you. Uh, yes. sure All right. We've got some celebrity news and I brought snacks. Yes. <laughs> we love it. Oh, that looks Ooh. amazing. That's the best part oh, of this show. Oh, we forgot show. forks. Oh, well, we'll get right. in the commercial. We don't use forks, forks in we'll South Africa. <laughs> <laughs> so what's happening, Nikki? What's happening okay, in celebrity so news? So there's a lot going on. Today is celebrity celebrity. Mm. Oh, couples I, edition. We got our tea ready, just so you all. Yes, we got oh, our yeah. tea in yeah. there. Okay. This is couples edition, and the right biggest now. news right now <laughs> is <laughs> Orlando Bloom. <laughs> they got their tea. He put us on blast, I, everyone. I, I got it. Was uh, Orlando? Yes. Bloom and Katy Perry. After a year of dating, they're done. They have broken up. Now, the interesting thing about this is that. They were just together at the Oscars parties that happened this weekend. And everyone talked about the picture they took. It seemed like she was kind of like leaning away from him. And everyone was trying to read the body language like something is off. So they have broken up. And to me, this just begs the question of they're seeing that they're taking a break. Uh -huh. And they said something kind of in the lines of uh, Gwyneth Paltrow and Chris Martin, like conscious uncoupling. They didn't say that. They said oh. something like, we are lovingly separating from each other. It was like something like that. So this begs me to think, ask the question, can couples really take a break no, and get back all. together? Not at all. Thank you. Yeah. I feel the same way. What did you say, lovingly separating? There, it was like lovingly res and respectfully separating oh, from each other. That's the way to say I hate him. <laughs> right? <laughs> In a lovingly way. Exactly. I, I agree. lovingly want to leave you now. You suck. That's what yeah. it is. Yeah, yeah, that's but what I love is. you. Yeah, yeah. yeah what do you think guys they, think? I don't think they can take a break. I think you have to, I don't know. That's just me. I think Not that either. what I call taking a break is also known as booty calls. Ooh. Thank so, you. Uh, maybe that's what yes. it is. Yep. Maybe they're just doing that for right now. Yep. All I think about is Ross and Rachel. We were on a break. Yes, exactly. We <laughs> were on a break. Where's that? No. <laughs> so let's talk about Brad and Angelina. Okay. They're on talk this to is the other big news. Okay. So Brad and Angelina, we all know how that whole messy thing went down. Yeah. Then he married Angela. Um, uh, not, so they're in a messy divorce right now. So Brad reached out to his ex. Jen Aniston. They haven't really spoken to each other in about 10 years since the whole thing went down where he 
allegedly cheated, but he said he didn't cheat. I noticed the air quotes. I don't believe it. Um, so anyway, he reached out to Jennifer Aniston. And, um, Isn't she with somebody right now? She yeah, is. She is Justin, she's married to Justin Thoreau. He reached Justin out to needs him. to pick up that phone and go, hey, Brad. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, man. <laughs> Here's the deal. It's done. You lovingly separated. <laughs> you remember, Brad? Exactly. You remember, Brad? <laughs> That's my baby in there. Mini Brad is inside Jen right now. Oh! oh! That's yeah. what I'm gonna name him. Boom. Just to remind you what you passed up on. Thank Boom. you. I Thank like you very that. little. I like that. I agree. <laughs> I totally agree with you on this because. But here's the thing: the sources say that Justin is actually. This curry's delicious. He's okay with it. He's actually okay with it. He and, is. He's yeah, not because it. they're not texting all the time. He just reached out to her. But this is what made me upset. He texted her and he's like, "Happy birthday." This was like in January, and then he also was like. Um, according to sources, you know, I'm really going through a tough time with oh. Angelina right now. How Lame. dare you? Way Brad? to break the Brad. Uh, Thank way, to, you. way to break the, the guy code, Brad. Right? I write, I write back a new number. Who dis? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Hey, hey, Brad, cash me outside. <laughs> cash me out How about that? How about that? <laughs> right. I would have right. been like, you tried it. Excuse me. <laughs> Thanks, but, yeah. Nikki. All right, Thank celebrity. You, and we'll get you tea next time. We'll you, get you come tea. back to the show, we'll get you tea. Sure. <laughs> we'll be back right after this. Yeah. Today on 8 News Now at 5, the Justice Department making a move and putting the future of Nevada's marijuana industry on shaky ground. George Knapp shows you what's now on the table. Plus road rage and Nevada drivers. Your fashionable furniture needs. Like. <laughs> he teased on social media that he had something awesome to unveil on Wednesday. Also, Bruno, along with Joe Coy. for you, that's what I like. <laughs> Is that Bruno? Yes, it's me. <laughs> me to Bruno. Bruno's been to your restaurant. Twice right? he came to my restaurant. There you go. See? <laughs> Vegas be doing things. When he's in town, he knows where to go. You can catch Bruno performing over at the Park Theater. I love you. Love you. Mm -hmm. Bye. Thanks for coming Bye. in, Thanks Joe. for coming in. Best show in Vegas. Aww. I love you guys. We love you. Oh, Thank bye. you. I have to come back soon. I know. I wish he didn't have to leave. He's so famous now. He has to catch a flight and go uh, somewhere else. Boo. Oh. Well, Disney is bringing a progressive twist to their live-action remake of Beauty and the Beast, which I cannot wait to see. I know. The adaption will show a gay moment between two of the characters. Director Bill Condo told Attitude Magazine the scene will convey the conflict conflicted feelings Gaston's sidekick LeFou has. He described LeFou as somebody who on one day wants to be Gaston and on another day wants to kiss Gaston. And that's Josh Gad, who um, is also known as the voice of Olaf in Frozen. So yes. he's, prefer he's, uh, he's taking on that role, so it should be interesting. He's so funny, too. I know. I love him. He's oh, great. Um, are, you, are you excited about Emma? Watson playing yes. that? Yeah, I think she's going to be really so good. She's so talented, and she really does sing, at least if, judging by the commercials. She's actually singing in those in those scenes, so I can't wait. It's going to be a good one. Uh, I think we are going to take a little break here. Yeah, and we've got a game coming up. Yes. We're bringing Ted Florendo in to see if he could uh, beat us. We'll, we'll see. explain coming up. <laughs> Furniture for Las Vegas Now, provided by Walker Furniture. From outer space, no city shines brighter. But behind all the lights are the stories. The stories no other team is telling. The stories no other team can uncover. The stories no other team will touch. Every reporter, every day, bringing you the side of Las Vegas everyone else overlooks. Eight News Now, today and every day. We are the Valley's News Leader. Victim of a crash. A way that Kindred continues the care. Now is the perfect time to do some spring cleaning, and who better to help you get organized than California Closets? We have the owner, Larry Hugel, here today with help uh, to get us decluttered and organized, but I have to start off and say that I have used California Closets before. You guys have done a great job for me, and I love that you guys are a leader in the industry. How did you earn such a great reputation? Absolutely, Mercedes. Well, California Closets, is a leader in our industry because we have a product development team that literally travels the world to seek out new design philosophies, new materials that we implement into our systems. 
We have a, a company in Italy that we bring in our Tresor line of materials. It's heavily textured. That's what the main structure is made out of. We have this wonderful glass company up in Canada. Look at these pieces of glass. I mean, these, the, the, your old white closet, that is, that in, is the in the past. That is in the past. They are nicer than my bedroom, quite frankly, some of these closets so that you make. This glass can be used in many ways. This has a stenciling on it. It, can be, it can be inserted on an aluminum frame door. It could be the back panel uh, above your dresser. Oh. This this glass can also be inserted in one of our wood frame doors. Look at this. I mean, just imagine your closet having this as, you know, the entryway to it. It's just so beautiful. And what, I mean, the materials that you use. So this is another one of California Closet's uh, vendor partners. This is a, a company that does this inserted echo resin panels. They use 40% recycled materials, and they they use organic materials sandwiched in between the resin. This oh, is bamboo rings. That is gorgeous. I just love how creative you are with this, and you're using sustainable materials. Mm -hmm. It is absolutely gorgeous. The name is California Closets, but obviously you do much more than just closets. We do a lot of what we call front room systems. We do a lot of media systems, uh -huh. uh, Murphy beds, craft rooms, home offices, right? The daughter's going off to college. You have that bedroom. What are you going to do with Kick it? Take her out and make a beautiful room from California Closets. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> now, I have a problem with organization, and that's the reason why I called you guys in the first place, because my closet was just a disaster. And it was so nice because a designer came in and redesigned the whole thing to asking me, okay, what are your issues here? What do you need help with? And I love how you are able to declutter me in a matter of one day. What are some of your tips to declutter? And you said the number one clue, declutter. Yes. There's the 20-80% rule. 20%, we use 20% of what we have 80% of the time. It's only 20%. Get rid of that. Whether you're talking about in your closet, those clothing that's just sitting there, get rid of it. You don't need it anymore. I tell myself, I'll wear that one day. But you're right. I literally wear like the same part of my closet over and over. Just get rid of it. Absolutely. Okay. Think about it. And you have to change your habits. How do we store things? Whether we're talking about the closet or a storage cabinet, you want to store the items you use mostly eye level. Items you use less, below. Okay. Items you use least, above. All right, so that means all the high heels go above and all the flats go right in the middle because right. I use, okay, all right. And, and don't be afraid to invest in a proper storage system, whether we're talking about the closet where we have slanted shoe shelves where you can show off your shoes, eye level, you can see what you need instead of on the bottom on the floor where you can't find them, or whether, think about when you come home, you take a coat off. What do you do with your coat? You just, you, you walk into your kitchen and you throw it on oh your, no. your, your table, right? It's like so, you know me. <laughs> right, so we walk in our garage and we walk through our laundry room. Why not have some hooks there on the wall that you can take your coat off? Maybe design a, a mudroom system where you can have cubby holes above. Maybe the kids come home, take their backpack off, put it on a hook or put it in a cubby hole. And make that Organize, habit. invest in organization. It's I, the best thing you can do. They really did change everything for me. You guys are fantastic and if you want to get a hold of California Closets all you have to do is visit their website they have three locations all over the valley or call them at 702-891-0000 thank you so much oh, thank you appreciate it Next Wheel, the Team Dream Team is here I'm Alexandra and I'm Alexandra and friends here Apoyo Loco fresh from the grill our 5 o'clock news starts here in just a few minutes. Let's see what's coming up with Dave Cavassier. All right, thanks, guys. Well, if this isn't a road sign for serious road rage, I don't know what is. As we were putting together a story on road rage, our police scanners in the newsroom erupted as officers responded to a shooting, yes, sparked by road rage. 8 News Now reporter Mauricio Marine is live at the scene. We'll have the latest details coming up in a few minutes. Plus, a look inside a high-tech grow house. The I-Team's George Knapp takes us on a tour amidst concerns of federal crackdowns on pot. Find out what these operations are up against. And in tonight's Try It Before You Buy, consumer advocate Michelle Mortensen tests whether you can really toast terrific meals with toast bags Can you just simply push and out pops dinner? We'll find out. Back to you. <laughs> we All go right. from Joe Coy to me. That's, <laughs> that's not a good transition. <laughs> I like the male guests we've had at this yeah. table today. I'm all about that. And we're going to play a quick game here in a second. But okay. You're going to do the weather update real quick? Yeah, quick update. Temperatures, of course, in the 40s for tonight. Cool and quiet. 
Light winds because we're not expecting big winds tomorrow. 70 degrees the high, sunny and nice tomorrow. And we'll have an update on your weather, full weather coming up uh, at 5 o'clock. Okay. All right. We, so we had played this game with Joe Coy. We had it ready to go. Alex, let's... Uh, Alex let's has the cards. Like, Alex, the intern, has the cards. It's kind of like this. headbands, okay? So oh, okay. you're going to put something over your head. Lindsay's going to do it. We have to have her guess what oh, she's okay, got. Okay, okay. All right. All right. Uh, if Deer. You uh, Bunny. Uh, Punching uh, what, Robin. What, what, get over here. Oh, we can, so we can talk. Robin. We can say it. Okay. Robin, I'm going to get in this black car. Oh, Batman. Oh, no, no. Yes. oh, I was just going to fix it. Okay. Oh, yeah, you go. Oh. Look, look at me. Oh, Madonna. I'm so... Uh, no, but I'm, I'm on a too runway. too sexy for my shirt. Oh. Too I'm on sexy a runway. for said Fred. Let me show off uh, these clothes. A, a model. Me, like, close mm -hmm. enough. Modeling. Modeling. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. All, All right. right. Last one, Ted. All right. Uh, oh, upside down. Uh, oh. Okay. Oh. You're dying. Stay in the lap. Stay in the lap. Uh, John Travolta. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Uh, not on my watch. watch. Uh, uh, not on my watch. Uh, uh, CPR, goodbye. <laughs> CPR. <laughs> CPR. <laughs> I thought we were doing movies. You're dying. You're doing movies. <laughs> I was like, oh, performing uh, CPR. Hard, man. Every day we...